Today we're going to talk about uh, your project. We're going to come around to talk about your project, your semester project. But first we're going to spend some time talking about web design. And uh, you have a lab assignment coming up due next week that um, where you need to do some research on the web and find some guidelines about what constitutes good and bad web design. Um, I think I take a slightly different approach than many people do to web design. Because a lot of times when people talk about web design, they talk about exclusively how the page looks. What colors are used, what fonts are used, that sort of thing. That is an important part of web design, but it's not the whole picture. So let's take a step back, all right, and say what constitutes, and talk about for a second, what constitutes a good versus a bad website, all right? If you were to think about a website that you like, a website that you visit a lot, um, a website that you're satisfied with, however you want to put it, um, you're not going to that website because it looks pretty, all right? I really doubt that. Why do people go to YouTube? Well, not because fonts used are great or the colors used are great. People go to YouTube because it has interesting, funny, using, however you want to put it, videos about just about any topic that you could think of. So people have a need, <coughs> need to see a topic video about a particular topic, and their goal is to find that, so they go to YouTube, and most of the time, they're able to satisfy their goal. Do a quick search, and you can find a video about just about any topic that you want. All right? Uh, when you go to Google, chances are your goal is to find a web page about something. When you go to Lorain County Community College's website, chances are your goal is to maybe find out what uh, summer courses are being offered. Maybe find out what courses are required for your degree. Maybe find out what is the email address or the phone number of your counselor or advisor to contact. And if a website can provide the answer to these questions, for you, it's a good website. If it's difficult to find the answers that you're looking for or the content that you're looking for or do the thing that you want to do, then you could say it's a bad website. So let's put that first and foremost uh, in our mind, all right? That at the top of the list for what makes a good website, the content, the functionality. Of the website. That's top on the list of the things that are important for a website. So what does web design have to do with that? Well, web design to a large degree, is about planning what the content is going to be. It consists of identifying what you think your users' goals are going to be, identifying your goals as an organization, and trying to figure out what content helps satisfy those goals. That's sort of the important first step when you're developing a website is identifying the goals that you are going to have on the web, the website, and you by you, I mean the organization that's creating the website, and what your users' goals are going to be. Because you need to satisfy those in order to have a good website. You could have the most beautiful looking website in the world if it doesn't satisfy those things then 
it's probably not a good website. Let's look at three different search engines, three different programs that you can use to search the web. And notice that they all take slightly different approaches. Look first of all at probably the most famous one, Google. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a beautiful website in, in the sense of I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna print it out and hang it on my refrigerator because I like how it looks so much. Yet I would say it's extremely well designed. Why? Because it helps me satisfy my goals. If I am looking for a particular topic, get great search results. And it's very simple to do that searching. All I have to do is type in the box and click these buttons. Another search engine is Microsoft's Bing. You notice it too kind of has a simple, uh, simple uh, uh, approach. They do have a nice photograph behind it and they have some other photographs there which, hey, who doesn't enjoy looking at, you know, beautiful photographs, you know? So they make it a little more involved, but at the basis of it is still satisfying the goal to be able to search very quickly. Yahoo, on the other hand, if you notice, has more than just search. They must have identified different goals for their users than strictly searching, because this is much more complicated page. This is sort of meant to be sort of your start page where you can go and you can search for something if you want, or you can get a, a brief preview of the news headlines, or you can take a glance at the weather here, or do you know, pretty much anything uh, that you want to. Which one of these is, is well designed, is the best design? Well, again, it matters what your goals are and what the user's goals are. I typically would say Google is the best design because what I want out of a page like this is the ability to search and search quickly. So this page loads up extremely quickly, all right? This page gives me the best search results possible and the interface is so simple that I can't possibly mess it up. So, where does the visual aspect of web design come in? All right, we've seen in our uh, discussion of CSS over the last couple of weeks, how you can make anything on the page look literally almost any way you want. You can give things different colors. You can give things different fonts. You can position them in, di position them in different places. You can vary up and change the look of a page so many different ways. So, what are we going to do? You know? Someone once told Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility, all right? CSS gives you great power over the look of a web page. You now have a good responsibility to use that power to accentuate the content. Okay. So that's what we mean when we say a page is visually designed uh, well, is that the page supports or accentuates the user satisfying their goals. And what are some ways that you can do that? Well, you can do that first of all, by having a, a clear and logical navigation. Now, 
That is one of the most important aspects of well-designed pages, is it's clear what page you're on and how you can get to other pages on the site. It's clear visually, in other words, you don't have to guess what the navigation is, all right? But it's also clear logically. Let's look at Lorain County Community College's webpage, which I'm not holding up as an example of a perfectly de designed web page, but there's some good aspects about it. First of all, it should be clear what the links on this page are. These are links and these are links. So it's, it's pretty intuitive the way it's designed, the way this is designed with the white font against the blue background and the fact that when you put your mouse over it, you get a pull down menu. That these are the links. Likewise, it's pretty clear that these are the links. So. Visually, it's clear what the navigation is. There's also some additional navigation at the very bottom of the page or maybe some. Less popular links. Are they logically designed correctly? I think they do a fairly good job. They have a section for getting started. In other words, if I want, if I've chosen to attend Lorain County Community College, what do I need to do? I can look at getting started and I can get here. I can find out how to apply, get financial aid, request information, and so on. If I'm introduced, if I'm if I'm interested in my academic program under academics. I can find all the programs that are offered. I can find information from the catalog about them and so on. Student resources, campus life, business services, and so on. And they have a special section for faculty and staff. So I would say that LC's webpage, at least on the very top level, has a fairly clear and logical navigation. Let's look at Google. Well, it's pretty obvious these are links. And this is a button. And when you do a search for something, Pretty clear what you click on to go to the next page. So the navigation there is pretty clear. So that's one of the things that is important about visual design. First of all, making sure your navigation is clear and making sure it's logical. The second thing that you can do is you can use color, fonts, etc. to organize information. Emphasize information, indicate what's the same versus what's different on a page, and so on. Let's look at Lorain Community College's page, for example. If we look at that. These things are like headings which separate the page into sections. The fact that these are all set up with an image and a little color banner underneath it indicates that uh, there are different sections of the website. This stuff by being set off to the side with a little bit of a color to give a heading for it. And this, you know, these are the calendars of events that are on campus. If this was mixed up in the middle of all the rest of this content, <coughs> it would be very hard to determine what the special events were. But in this case, the content is highlighted by having the events off to the side and in their own little box. This article doesn't blend into this article because we have a headline here 
and we have some blank space and a line between the things. So we have visually used to emphasize, we have visually shown what things are grouped together, what things are different groups, and so on through our visual design. If we had a important announcement, like, you know, when the weather's bad during, during spring semester and they have to cancel class because of snow or something, you know, maybe that would be in a different style font. Maybe it would be in a larger font. Maybe it would be in a different color font. All those things would emphasize something. It wouldn't be the same color as the rest of the text because we would want it to stand out. So our visual design is meant to organize the material on the page, organize, not organize, organize, emphasize, point out what's the same, what's the different, and to make things about the page clear. I've heard people say that one way you can tell if a page is well designed is sort of look at a page and blur your eyes. Like if we were going to look at the Wall Street Journal. We look at this content. Even with my glasses off, I can tell what are separate articles. That there's an article over here, that there's an article over here. That these are sort of on, on the side, so maybe these are of slightly less importance, and so on. All right, so let's talk about the design process, specifically the process that you're going to follow for your project. So we've talked about what makes a good website, one that satisfies both the user goals and the goals of the organization. Those two need to work hand in hand. And also what the visual aspects of the page can, can be used or how they can be used to highlight and to focus on the information. So let's look at what you need to do in your assignment for the semester project. First thing that you need to do is you need to create a design document. Now this is due. We look in the project folder, the project module. This is due. The design is due March 29th. We got a little bit of time, but maybe a month and a half. So it's not too soon to start thinking and coming up with your design. The final project are the actual pages themselves, and that will be turned in on May the 10th. By May the 10th. If you have not already reviewed the material on this, please review this because we're going to go over some of it, but we're not going to go over every word of it. All right, for your semester project, you're going to create a small website about any topic. My aim is to make this fun. So I'm not assigning topics, I'm letting you choose a topic. As long as it's appropriate for a college level class, I'm pretty much fine with any topic that you choose. Pick something that you're interested in. Um, I've had students in the past do um, their project about their motorcycles. Well, they're proud of their motorcycles. They're going to want them. They're, they're going to showcase their motorcycles. The students going to want to do a good job doing that, and therefore will put in the time to do a really great job on the project. All right. I do not have a nonprofit for you to do this semester, so you can ignore that part. And anyhow, read through the rest of this. Your 
you're designing. All right, you're gonna design a document that has five different sections in it. Four of those sections are going to be in a Word document. The last section is going to be HTML code. First section is called strategy. This is a section where you define the goals of the website. All right. Let's think if you're building a site for a restaurant. Let's say you, your family runs a family owned restaurant and they don't have a website and they want to build a website for it. All right. And you're you're brought on to do that job. Well, the organization is making that site for some reasons, right? To advertise their site, to showcase what the site is, uh, to showcase what the restaurant offers, to maybe show a menu so that people can uh, decide if the restaurant is right for them, and so on. Maybe the restaurant has a side catering business as well. So maybe you want to attract more business to the catering side of your restaurant. The bottom line is there's some reasons that the organization is making the site. They have some goals. In addition, the owner, uh, the, the users of the site are going to have some goals as well. All right. What are some of the goals that a user might have in visiting a restaurant's website? Well, find out what kind of food they have. Find out if they meet special dietary restrictions. Maybe you have someone uh, in your party that, you know, that either has for religious purposes or for health purposes is required to be on a special diet. Well, you want to, if you're going to visit that restaurant, you're going to want to make sure in advance that that restaurant has items on the menu that fulfill the dietary restrictions. Maybe you want to check out the prices. Is this a really expensive restaurant or is it a budget restaurant? You know, maybe if you're taking out your whole family, you're going to be interested in the budget restaurant. Maybe you want to see what the decor of the restaurant's like. Maybe you want a nice, fancy restaurant to celebrate some special occasion. So you really want a, really want a fancy place. All right, maybe some pictures of the dining room would help show what kind of restaurant that your restaurant is. Point is, is that you're making the website for some reasons to satisfy some goals. Your users are visiting the site to achieve some goals. <laughs> In the very first step of this process, you need to identify those goals. All right. Now, we're not just going to say users have these goals. We're going to separate down our users into three different groups. And these groups are called personas. A persona is a representation of a typical visitor to the site, of one group of typical users visiting the site. For example, one persona might be a family that is looking for a place to celebrate someone's birthday. That would be a persona. Another persona might be a couple looking to go out on a date. 
third persona might be a business person that's traveling and, and needs to eat uh, their meals in a restaurant. All those different groups of users can have slightly different goals. So we're not gonna just try to identify one group of goals. We're gonna identify three groups of users and each of those users, each of those groups of users have their own goals. So you might develop one persona to be for the uh, family uh, looking to uh, celebrate a birthday. Well, you might look, uh, those people might be interested in the prices, right? They might be interested in if there's reservations taken because they have a large party coming in. They don't want to sit there waiting for a long time. Might see what kind of desserts they have. Do they offer birthday cakes? And so on. A couple looking to go out on a date might be interested in the price. Might be interested in the kind of food that they have. Maybe interested in the wine list. Maybe interesting in, in, in the decor or the atmosphere of the restaurant. And so on. So what you're going to do is, after you've written a very brief description of the, the site's topic or purpose, like you will say, I'm going to develop a website for my family-run restaurant. My three user personas are a family looking to, uh, to take the whole family out, a couple going on a date, a business person that is, uh, you know, is, is looking to uh, eat the meal while they're on a business trip. So you identify three different groups of people and you actually create a profile for each of those people. Let me show you some examples of what I mean. If we Google web design, personas, we can see some examples. All right. A definition and example. Web persona is a summary of the characteristics, needs, motivations, and environment of a key type of website user fictional character that communicates the primary characteristic of a group of users. Here's a couple examples. You have a business to consumer web persona. Here's some personas that they developed for that site. Penny. All right. And they really went elaborate and created storyboards and all that. You don't really need to go get that elaborate. Let's look for some image examples. Here's a good one. Okay, this is a, a, a persona for a online shoe company, I believe. So this identified the person, Randy Tyler. You actually go and make up fictional names for these people. The more that you can see these personas as actual people, the better you can put yourself in their shoes to try to decide what they want their site, what, what will work for them on the site. So they give this, they, they take, they go out of stock photos and find an image of someone, Randy Tyler. What they are representing are people, well, they, they say the profile is for someone with narrow feet, but really they're looking for anyone that has sort of uh, unconventional needs as far as uh, shoes go. 
So it could be large size, small size, you know, extremely large size, extremely small size, narrow feet, wide feet, fallen arch, and so on. Because chances are the needs that a person with uh, one of these qualities would have will be similar to the needs of other people with other kinds of specialized shoe needs. They give a quote, it's so difficult to buy shoes that fit my needs. Motivations, they talk about that. Here is, here is one thing I consider um, about the most important thing. The goals. This person needs to buy a very small shoe. Would like to purchase several pairs to fit occasion, style, and color. Hope that she doesn't have to sacrifice style or options when searching by fit. That's their goals, and that can be representative of anyone that has special needs as far as their shoes go. How might this affect the design of your website? Well, number one, they may allow you to search by width. This persona points out, hey, some people are very interested in the fit of the shoe and re with regard to the width. And therefore, I'm going to make sure that you can search by size and width, not just size. Would like to purchase several pairs to fit occasion, style, and color. What you might do is if you pull up the search results for one shoe, you might show other shoes of that same size. So sort of like what Amazon does with recommended products. If you, uh, if you um, search for one item, it will show you some of the things that go with that product and so on. So your persona should actually look like this. Give it a name, give some information about the profile, have a photo and talk about their goals and frustrations. So you'll create three of these personas. Almost any site you can think of, you can come up with at least three personas. That's why I picked the number three. What might be three different personas of people that are visiting the Lorain County Community College's website? Well, there's at least three. There's probably a lot more than that. One might be a prospective student. That is a student that is thinking of coming to Lorain County Community College. One might be a student that's already enrolled in Lorain County Community College. And a third might be faculty or staff. All right. All three of those groups of people visit Lorain County Community College's website. And they all have distinct needs. Now there might be some overlap between their needs, but they all have distinct needs. A prospective student needs to know how to apply to get accepted to the college, how to register for courses, and so on. A faculty member doesn't need that, but a faculty member needs to find their, their uh, forms, their, their human resources forms to request a sick day or something like that. Now, again, for a large website, like for a college, you could probably think of a lot more personas. You could actually separate prospective students into two groups. Students coming right from high school <clears throat> versus adult learners that are in the working community and are looking at maybe enhancing their skills or, or uh, starting a new career or something along those lines. You could have local businesses that are looking to train their employees on particular skills. 
You could have members of the community that want to know what are the cultural events that are going on on campus. And maybe they're not interested in, in attending classes to get a degree, but maybe they're interested in continuing education classes. Or maybe they want to take advantage of the gym that's on campus. So on. So it's not hard to think of three personas, three different types of people that are going to be visiting your site. Um, if you're going to do a site on a video game, a lot of students in my classes pick video games. It'd be pretty easy to think of three personas. One would be someone who is already playing that game and wants some tips or advice on how to solve certain problems or whatever. Another might be a person that is interested in buying that video game. They might use the site to do some research to find out, gee, do I think I will enjoy this game? Third persona might be a parent that is interested in buying the game for their, their child and want to know if it's appropriate uh, and if it is, uh, you know, um, is it a good choice for someone of their child's age? Pretty much any topic that you create for your website, you can come up with three personas. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come up with a prioritized list of three user goals for each of the personas. So you have a total of nine goals. Going back to the video game example, a person that already owns the game might want a walkthrough for the game, might want cheat codes for the game, might want hints, you know, less than a complete walkthrough, but hints on how to solve certain puzzles in the game. A parent looking at it might want to see artwork from the game, videos from the game. The, uh, I forget the name of the organization that rates video games, but the uh, might want to see the video game rating about what age group it's for. I want to read a synopsis of the gameplay and the plot of the game to, to decide if it's appropriate and so on. You will also create a prioritized list for three of your goals for the project. By your goals, I mean the goals of the hypothetical organization that you're creating the website for. So let's talk about the restaurant example. Obviously, the restaurant wants to make more money, right? So that's their goal, but we can actually break that down into separate goals. One goal might be to increase business during uh, Monday through Thursday, which is the slow part of the week. Uh, restaurants do a lot of their business on the weekends, Friday through Sunday. Well, you might want to try to increase business on the uh, on the uh, on the downtime of the restaurant, Mondays through Thursdays. You might want to increase the catering business of the restaurant. Get more people interested in the catering business of the restaurant. Finally, you might be interested in uh, you know rewarding loyal customers by things like specials or coupons or loyalty programs. You know, a punch card every time you, uh, every time you dine at a place, you get a, a credit on your card. When you get 10, you get a certain amount off the food. So that would increase customer loyalty. So that's the first section. Description of your site's purpose or topic, that can be a sentence or two. Your three user personas, along with a prioritized list of their goals. A prioritized list of why you are creating the site. And it should look professional. It should look like a report that you are going to turn in to your boss. It should look very businesslike and professional. 
You all have taken CISS 121, so I trust that you can format a Word document to look professional. Remember to respect copyright law. If you do, uh, th there is actually a posting in Canvas about uh, about using uh, copyrighted material for educational projects. The short version of it is you can't take too many images from a given site and give them credit. So if you were to find an image of someone on some site, make sure you give credit to the site on which you found the image. Okay, so you have the strategy section. Output of the strategy section are goals. Now, we come to the scope section. The scope section is about what specific content we're going to have on the site that's going to address those goals. By the way, is a final thought. Things like this are not goals of the website. The site should be user friendly. Of course, the site should be user friendly. That's self evident. You don't need to define that as a goal. Just like saying the site should be accessible. The site should have clear navigation. Those are all things that are part of a good site. And therefore, there's no need to point those out as goals. Site should relate why people are visiting the site. People are not visiting the site to admire the navigation. Sure, the navigation needs to be good, but that's not why people are visiting the site. People are visiting the site for the content and the functionality. All right, the scope describes what the project will do that satisfy the goals. So if one of my goals as a restaurant order is to increase customer loyalty, I could do that a number of different ways. One of them is to come up with a loyalty program, like I said, a car, a card that if you get so many checks on it, you get an amount off. You could put that on the, as a requirement, that there will be a loyalty program that if you visit the restaurant 10 times, you get $10 off. A goal that uh, someone uh, that is visiting your restaurant uh, because they're planning a date, you might have pictures of the dining room to let them know what the atmosphere in the place is like, to help them decide if that's a good place for the date or not. You're taking out a family, you're obviously going to be interested in the price. So a list of the menu with current prices would be valuable for that. Now, some of the things that you're going to put on the site, some of this content that you're putting on the site in this section, because that's what you're really doing is defining the content that's going to be on your site, can address more than one goal. For example, People going out on a date along with a family may both be interested in the price of the of the uh, uh, the cost of items at the restaurant. So having a price list would actually satisfy more than one goal. But every piece of content that you put on your site ought to help satisfy one goal. And every goal that you define should be satisfied by at least one requirement in the scope section. So the requirements are a list of pieces of content on your site. We're not talking about organizing it yet. We don't have to say that, you know, this, this, and this is going to be on one page. This, this, and this is going to be on another page. We don't need to do that yet. We just need to decide what content we need on our website. My guess is that this will be 15 to 20 
well-worded requirements. So let's talk about, again, the restaurant and let's create some requirements. One requirement might be that the, uh, that, that the site will have a link to Google Maps to show you where the restaurant is. The site will show a full menu to show you what the prices are and to show what the offerings are. The site will have information about uh, food allergens and dietary restrictions. The site will have what hours they're open, what days and hours that they're open. The site might have reviews from local newspapers or customer testimonies. Might help a person decide if they want to go to the restaurant or not. To read that the restaurant got four stars or to read a customer say that I took my kids here for their birthday party and they really had a good time. Right? Those reviews might help certain groups of people decide if they want to go to that restaurant or not. All right, there are three more sections. Structure, wireframe, and prototype. Read this if you have not already. All right. Next time, we are going to finish this off, the discussion of the project, and we will also start to talk about how to design pages for a website. So far, we've, desi we've designed pages just more or less one or two at a time, right? We've created a web page about a topic and we've created a second page about a topic. Well, here you're going to have five to seven different web pages. So you might want it to be designed a certain way that allows for there to be clear navigation and so on. So we'll talk about the CSS involved in creating a website that sort of sticks together as a cohesive whole. So that's what we will be talking about next time. All right, that's all I have today. Uh, we will see you uh, either in lab or next week. Take care. Are there any questions now for people that are out there watching the lecture? All right, I will be uh, on uh, uh, WebEx in uh, a couple minutes. I'm gonna go get a bottle of water. You can tell because my throat's a little scratchy today. And uh, 